Hello, friends, and welcome back to Figure Study, where we appreciate the form in Transformers. And I finally have more Jojo uh, stuff, and I, I know I've been going out of order, but I have got my hands on Jewel King, and hence cubes one, two, and three. So yeah, um, I will say up front, not a, not as much of a fan of Jewel King as I am of Jewel, of Jewel Wild, but I actually do enjoy this guy more than I thought I was going to. Um, just was not expecting it. Anyway, I'm going to take a look at the individual bits first. So number one here is a nice red and white cube with some nice molded detail all over. It's like nondescript uh, semi-mechanical detail and then cube-based detail. It doesn't look bad. These kind of look like thrusters, which is, I would assume, because of the uh, the eagle mode or bird mode. I think it's eagle. But yeah, it's it's a cube. It is a cube with a number one on it. And then for shark here, that is a cube with a number two on it. And I do think it's interesting how two and three actually have a similar motif where you've got the number with like these squares along the sides and bottom. Whereas one does not have that. It's actually a totally different pattern. Not entirely sure why, but you know, whatever. Anyway, it's a cube. It's a cube with some pretty obvious screw holes in the front there, but again, some nice molded details and more stuff that could qualify as thrusters up there. I've been... It's like ever since I got my hands on a few more of the Georgia cubes, I've been paying more attention to this stuff, and I realized there's a surprising amount of sculpted detail in these things, like Titan's Return level sculpted detail. Like, just look at... I mean, you know, again, there's three, which is Lion, but, I mean, just look at, look at this intricate little mechanical cube hieroglyphical-ish detail all along the side here. Like, that's that's some impressive minutia <laughs> that they're showing off there. And on the bottom, too, just some really nice, interesting details. So, you know, I can appreciate the uh, some more intricate sculpting that they've done here. And again, it's, it's like comparable to Titan's Return in terms of just the texture that it brings to these things. It makes them more visually interesting, even in cube mode. But of course, cube mode's not all of it. But before we get into all that, I bring this out. This is the one thing that I don't like about this set, is this sword spike thing, which actually does have some nice detail on it. Focus. And, uh, I mean, it does look good from that side. This side, it's all, you know, copyright info and screw holes, but focus. But, uh, yeah. And then, of course, this end here has some nice sculpting and molding on it. But it's just the thing that bugs me about this is there's no place to store this for cube or vehicle modes. And it's the same issue that I have with the this thing that comes with Jewel Wild. There's just no place to store it when you've got everyone in their cube modes. I mean, arguably, you can tuck this somewhere in the uh, when they're in their animal modes, but that's kind of, you know, <laughs> not official and highly debatable. Anyway. Let's do the transformation thing, which I am actually going to do in real time, real time this time because these things are so simple. So, transform the eagle here. It's just a matter of flipping out this head. And when you flip it out all the way, hang on, flip it out all the way, and these pop open, and you can swing these out to make what sort of qualify as wings. And, I mean, it does, it reveals more detail. 
more sculpted detail, more slightly more painted detail, and I do kind of like how this white from the eagle's head continues on into the back. It makes And the white also makes this tail bit pop out more. I'm generally okay with this, and like the wings, they're not complete, but they work for what they are. The only thing that bugs me is the same thing that bugs a lot of people, and that's the, the robot fists that are just sticking out there. And I don't care if it's show accurate or not, I really wish there was a way for those to just be in there when the eagle is in eagle mode. But they're spring-loaded, so you're stuck with them. Now in terms of storage for this thing, I found that like if you really want to, you can kind of slide it in there. And then it works as sort of like a Concord Eagle with a big spike sticking out of its back. Yeah. It's not the best look, but it's technically storage, I guess. So it's something. Anyway, let me put this down again and move on to the shark. And the shark is my favorite of this trio. I like the shark because, first of all, it's a shark, and second of all, I think it's got a neat transformation where you just pop these bits out on either side. And when you sandwich them together, it will form the shark head. But in addition to forming the shark head, when you do that, there's this, uh, there's this little bit, this little bit right here that kind of so you kind of, you can push that in. When these sandwich together, it pushes that in and pops this out, which you can then pull out to both make the tail and pop up the dorsal fin. And that's really cool. I also like how, by the same token, if you push this in, if you push it in all the way, I'll do it this, from this angle so you can see, when you push that tail in all the way, it pops the face open. And then you can click it shut. And I just, I love that motion. I think it's just fun and satisfying to pull off. Anyway, the shark, I really like the extra detail that you get with the shark. It's got this huge boat-like head. The white stripe is a little odd, but I do like they painted the teeth. Got that kind of imposing red eye. A very identifiable shark-shaped head. A little bit of texture on the inside of the mouth there. You got the fins, some more detail in there, and I also like that they even molded gills in there. That's that's a nice touch. And then on to the back, the tail fin has some nice molded detail on it, and does read as a tail fin. Uh, the dorsal fin, a little bit of detail, not a lot, but you know it works. And yeah, just. I really like the shark. Um, it's, you know, some of the shark shape is obviously covered by like these boxy bits that they just, you know, you can't really do much with because it's a very simple transformation, but I like it. I like the shark a lot. And I neglected to look at the eagle's head more closely. So there we've got the white for the top there, a really nice gold for the beak, and then that green eye. And I think it's interesting, like, I'll get into this more when I've got more of the animals all together. And it's going to be a couple of videos before that, but I think the variation in eye color for the different animals is interesting. I don't know if there's a reason behind it, because I've never seen the show, but it's just an interesting uh, observation. Anyway, moving on to the lion. Second favorite of the set. Just pop this and put that together, and then flip this up. And I like this because you've got these bits here that when you flip this up, it actually creates one continuous box around that really fantastic and goofy lion face. It's just this very, very square mane. But that's a really nice face. With, again, like the nicely painted teeth, although not like alternating, so it's just like a strip of white, but eh, whatever. I mean, even got the whiskers on there. It looks good. And then down here, you can see they got a little more detail in here and painted the paws. I don't quite know why this is supposed to be, like, I don't know if this is meant to create more definition for the legs or what, but I don't mind the detail. 
you can see more paw detail here. Not painted though. And I also like how there's this bit here, which is it's a part of the back part of the lion and it tucks into the front part when you transform it. You can kind of see it slide in there, but I like how that's there because it kind of fills in the midsection a little bit. and just kind of adds a little bit more bulk to the look of the lion mode. I guess this arrow thing kind of works as a tail too. Yeah. So, lion's not bad looking either. They're a good looking trio, honestly. Um, I still think, you know, shark's my favorite. Lion's is close second, and then eagle's kind of eh, whatever. I think eagle is honestly the weakest cube animal in the entire series, but it's fine. I mean, it is what it is. It's fun enough to mess around with. I'm not as big a fan of the automorph. I kind of prefer the, the automorph that comes with the shark because it's not spring-loaded. <laughs> and this is like, you know, like I've had times where like I go to transform him and things don't lock together properly or the arms swing forward and it's just kind of annoying. But anyway, yeah. And I've been, I've been so terrible at this. I always forget to do the size comparisons, so... Slap down Samus for a quick size comparison, and just to there. see how she stacks up, or the cubes stack up with an amiibo. There you go. And back into Lion. And I do love how, how quick those transformations are, too. They're just fun to pull off. Okay, so on to Jewel King. So now we're going to take Lion and... That take a shark and that and take eagle. You definitely want to flip the head down first because when you flip the head up, that activates the uh, these little bits here that are part of that automatic spring-loaded transformation. So you want to at least get the eagle head down to here where it'll like hard click into place. Otherwise you're not going to get anything to lock together when you try to put it back. And then tuck those in, you just kind of have to hold them down. It's another reason why I don't like the spring-loaded gimmick. You have to, like, put more effort into transforming them back into a cube than I think is really necessary. But anyway, there we have one, two, and three. Now, transform them. You just stack them on top of each other. And you can see there are these clips up here that just clip down the bottom there. There we go, and turn them around, and you can kind of see where this is going. And I don't think there's a particular order. I like to flip the eagle head up right from the start. Now we take this thing, and we put it down into, there's this hole that actually goes all the way through all three cubes. So you just drive it through, and then when you push it down all the way, there are these little gray clips or gray pieces here they'll push against these and that will activate the automatic transformation so just boop. and there you can kind of see again part of my irritation with this and then lastly i'm gonna have to raise this up a tad pardon me a moment yep there we go And lastly, grab this and you give it a turn. And I wasn't con like, I thought this was going to be a pain in the butt to turn, but it's actually much more effortless than I thought it was going to be. So you just give that a turn and click it back into place. And that will reveal the face. And then you can actually pull this out. And that makes the sword, which can go into a hand. And here on you. There we go. And here we have Juo King. And I am not as big a fan of this guy as I am of Juo Wild, but I do think he is pretty cool in his own right. I'm into the binary, or not binary, primary. Ugh, what's going on with my brain there? Primary color scheme where you've got just the yellow, yellow, blue, blue, red, red. Like it's not, not like a fancy shade of anything. It's just like, you know, 
Someone dumped a bunch of temper paint out, and that's what you got. And I'm cool with that. And I like the way all of these details work. Like the face. The face is... I mean, the face looks good. The head looks fine. I'm not a fan of how proportionally tiny it is. It's just so small. But I do like just, you know, the head helmet thing, the design there, the paintwork. It's all nice. It's just... Proportionally speaking, this guy has a teeny tiny head. I'm not a huge fan of the teeny tiny head. The chest also looks pretty good, and I like how you've got that detail in there that kind of makes that makes that black and white V-shape continuous all throughout the torso. The way the one splits for the arms also works pretty well, because you just get a little bit of that white on either side to kind of help add some visual interest to the arms. And then you've got this weird totem pole looking shark face for the belt, pelvis area, and the thighs. And then the lion knee pads and little lion toes. Now one thing that Joe King does that Joe Wild doesn't do that I kind of really like is the continuation of design elements from one cube to the next in, uh, in robot mode. So I'm just going to temporarily yank his head off so that you can see what I'm talking about because you can't disassemble him with that in there. So like you can see here, Cube Shark gets cut off right here and then Cube Eagle actually has the top part of that element on there. So when you clip them together, that's when it creates that full look. And then here, these yellow knee pads are actually a part of Cube Shark and that's where it cuts off on Cube Lion. So when you clip them together, it gives him like a nice kind of knee pad look. And I like how it does that. I just don't like his design as much as Joe Wild in general. But I do like that particular that particular design element that they're going for. I just I wish that they used that more often in other combinations in the series. And I know it would have been really tricky to do, but I feel like if you've got a couple other like devoted these are official combinations that make completely separate mecha. I feel like they could have pulled that off. But it is, you know, it is what it is. I hate to say it, but, you know, that's just the way it goes. So, yeah, it's a shame, but hey, it's still a neat line. So, yeah, altogether, this looks really nice, and I love, like, just the little details in the uh, lower part of the body here, like just that shark face with the gold eyes and the silver thigh bits. And these little elements on the knee pads and the little lion faces and the shins. It's just, it's some neat, neat visual design. It's mostly just his dinky little head and the eagle itself that I'm not a huge fan of with this set. And I'm sure everyone already knows how this is gonna look, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because now I can. Haha. -ha. <laughs> there we have Joe King and Jewel Wild together, and I still I prefer the look of Jewel Wild all total. But like I said, I actually ended up liking Joe King a lot better. And I mean, he also has the issue of the weird body shape that's like you know <laughs> has a cube butt. Joe Wild has the same issue, but the backpack kind of offsets it. But, uh, yeah, I just... They look good together. But I do like Joe Wild a bit more. And just real quick, just throw in size comparison. So you can see with them stacked together, there you go. And now one last thing. Uh, well, I'll come back to Jewel Wild in a second, but one last thing I wanted to go over is the cube animal weapons, because I have those two now. So assuming I am following everything correctly, I believe it is the giraffe, or in this case, zebra, that is matched up with Joe King, so turn him into his bazooka mode, and let his hand... And that will just go right in there. And then there's like this this little nub there that kind of sits in this little, this little divot here. Let's just kind of guide it. And 
Like, that works, but it doesn't really sit in his hand that far. I mean, he holds it, but yeah. So there you have... Angle that up a little bit. So there you have Joe King with the zebra bazooka instead of the uh, giraffe bazooka. And this works totally fine for me, honestly. Like, I actually kind of, based on what I've seen of the giraffe... I honestly prefer the zebra because the black and white actually goes really well with the black and white that's just sprinkled throughout the rest of, of uh, Joe King. It's just, it's a nice look. And then for Joe Wild, I believe his official weapon is the mole, or in this case, the platypus. So that, flip that out, and then that will just peg into his fist. So, line that up, and there we go. And that is stupid. That is really stupid, and I'm not a fan of that. Not a fan of that at all. It's just, I mean, he's just holding an angry robot platypus. It's like, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to go near someone who is wielding an angry robot platypus. But it's absurd, and not in... Not in the best way. Another issue that I have with this is it's actually kind of difficult to get the platypus out of his hand. <laughs> it sticks in there really tightly. So yeah. Platypus. And yeah. Uh, and then if you're curious, just do this real quick. There's Jaguar. Which can be... There we go can also make for a pretty decent axe. And the owl. I'll just take his sword here. Come on. There we go. Shut that back in his head. And give him the owl boomerang. Yeah, I mean, the, the animal weapons are fine. I think the bazooka works best. And, like, the bazooka and the axe, I think. The, the zebra and the jaguar are the best uh, in terms of, like, individual accessories. Because the owl is a little bit too big for uh, Jewel King and Jewel Wild. And this just looks ridiculous in not a good way, but I kind of felt the same way about the mole, so no big shock there. But the rest of it is good. So yeah, joking. Um, not as not as cool as Jill Wild, but not terrible. And I mean, honestly, I, I think he's good. Like, if I had him first, I probably wouldn't even have that many issues. It's just Jewel Wild works so much better aesthetically. Um, even though I do, like I said, I appreciate the elements being carried into the different cubes to kind of make a more cohesive look. But, you know, you can't stop at just one. The whole point is to get a bunch of them and combine them. So... We'll get to that in the future, but that has been my look at Jewel King. He is neat. Um, I would say if you're not interested in getting all of them or a few of the, the different mecha, then, you know, probably best to go with Jewel Wild over Jewel King. But if you do plan on combining them up, then, you know, he's still, he's a great, he's a great time in that regard. So yeah, thank you everybody for watching. As per usual, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Any combination of those three would make me a happy Rob. And remember, art, which isn't technically cubist, but kind of is just for the sake of a pun, is more than meets the eye.